Would you like to know how you can attract more of your ideal clients to you? In today's show, we will be talking about an essential ingredient that you need to be working on as you create your course in order to have your ideal clients become fans and ready to buy your products. We're also going to look at how you can make the most of your video background and I'm going to be sharing a resource with you that can help build out your business roadmap. Welcome to the Recognized Expert Show. I'm Demelza Marie, and I'm here to help you go from the unheard course creator to the recognized expert in your space. So if you're an online course creator wanting to increase your impact, influence, and income, you are in the right place. Let's get started. Hey, if you're watching this live, then please hit the like button and say hi in the comments. And if you're watching the replay, then it would still be nice to hear from you too. I will actually be in the comments to interact with you while we're live, so it would be great to chat. Before we jump into the interview today, I just want to mention that if you struggle with feeling confident on camera or you would love to improve your on-camera presence, then I encourage you to check out the Confidence on Camera Challenge. It's a self-paced, practical course that will give you the strategy and tools you need to know to get confident on camera faster and to come across better to your audience. Now, while I do believe practice is key to improving, you'll get better a whole lot quicker with strategic practice rather than just practicing the same mistakes and bad habits over and over again. So to find out more, go to demelzamarie.com, confidence on camera. Now today I'm going to be chatting with Sandra Colton Medici on the topic of attracting your ideal clients through personal branding. Now Sandra has a rather unusual but exciting background working with famous household names and has pivoted from the entertainment industry to helping online course creators capitalize on your unique stories and brand. So let's dive right in. So hey Sandra, thank you so much for joining us today and I look forward to hearing a little bit more about your story because from what I have seen, it sounds really interesting. So I would love to you to share. It's so funny that you say that it sounds interesting because it felt interesting along the way too. <laughs> it wasn't exactly like, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, be an entertainer or be an educator or develop your own online course. Like I feel like all of those things just kind of came. For me, my story started out as a dancer when I was about three years old. My mom basically needed to put us into something and that was pretty much the one thing that you could do at that young of an age. And my sister and I kind of parlayed that into a professional career. We were on Star Search, which I'm not sure if all of your viewers and listeners um, are familiar with in the UK, but definitely one of the the earlier talent shows um, before like American Idol and all of that. And we won the whole thing as teenagers, which kind of solidified our career path in entertainment. So yeah. for me, it wasn't like, oh, I, I want to go out and be, you know, a professional dancer. It was just kind of what I was good at. Um, so when I think about, you know, what sounds interesting right now, I'm like, yeah, it sounds interesting to look at in the background or like on paper. But at the time I was just having fun, you know, and, and for me, it ended up turning from that fun thing to being something that actually made me money. Um, I toured with Rihanna. I appeared as a background singer for Paulina Rubio um, on, you know, late night television. Um, I've been in movies and TV shows music videos with Justin Timberlake and Snoop Dogg. So my career as far as an entertainer is varied, you know, from singing, dancing, acting. Um, now I transitioned like a lot of people do. They kind of are like, huh, what should I do with my life? Have you ever had that question? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do I do? Right? And, and it doesn't happen just once. It happened for me uh, quite a few times. Um, I decided that I was going to go back to school and get my, you know, my master's degree. And then I ended up going back to school again and got my doctorate. And I felt like I just needed, I'm like a, a constant learner, you know, like I'm always wanting to know more, to be more, to do more. And, you know, at, at one point I was like, okay, now what do I do with all this knowledge? You know? And I thought, you know, I need to teach because that's what I wanted to do from a very young age too, was be a teacher. And so when you think of online courses, that's where we are right now, you know? So that's where, um, you know, the big boom obviously happened in 2020, but it was happening quite a long time before that too. So my epiphany, if you will, um, of how I kind of transitioned into being a course creator, content creator, you know, I've kind of always created content as an entertainer performer, 
Um, but in order to have it facilitate in an educational way, um, it really just happened in this last year and a half ish, um, where, you know, I've been giving lectures and, you know, teaching on webinars and things like that. Um, but I really thought, okay, well, what am I missing out of those things, those, those pieces and what could people get out of what I'm teaching that they're not already getting from all these different other courses. And I thought, you know, leadership style is one, um, because a lot of courses teach you how to, you know, make a product, but they don't necessarily teach you how to deliver the information mm -hmm. to be a great instructor, to um, help people understand the concept, not just throw the, the buzzwords at you. And so leadership style and instructional design were where I kind of had my epiphany of how I could get into the space of online course creation. I first created um, it's a course called uh, Course Sweetener because number one, I love sweets. Um, <laughs> and number two, I was like, it's kind of like that little additive to most courses that you don't find. It's kind of like that little topping, that little whipped cream, that little something extra that you needed that you didn't get when you downloaded as, you know, everybody else's course. This is what you're going to find in Course Sweetener. You're going to have a course that, you know, is going to help you create your own course, but it's going to help you with the outcomes that you needed to figure out before you started creating your course, you know, figuring out all those things that were missing. And now that I had created that course, I thought, okay, well, I'm not done. Okay. Because I thought, you know, once you get in it, if you're a course creator, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh, I could make this course and I can make this course and I can make a mini course and I could do a video, right? All those things. And I started looking at the space and I was really intrigued by the amount of digital product creators that are out there and not as many personal brands. And so I have created something called College of Style, which is basically taking what is missing and helping people create their personal brand. So when you think of people like Oprah, like I can't name one product that Oprah sells, but if she told me to go buy a book and she didn't write it, I would buy that book, right? Because mm -hmm. she is her own brand. She has broadened her horizons to more than just, I'm a product creator. I am my own entity, right? Not just to my friends, but to like the globe. And so when you think about what's missing right now, that, that's my entry point. I feel like after doing a lot of research, which is really important for course creators to do, is to really hone in on what's missing and do people need it? And that's where personal branding, I feel like is kind of the next boom in 2021 because everybody spent 2020 like, oh, I gotta, I gotta learn how to do this. Okay, now I got now I got a product. Okay, now it's really about while, while you have a product and it might serve a purpose or it might fill a demand, how are you going to sustain that? And that is really with a personal brand. And so for me, I kind of was like, okay, I, I can see how I can, you know, make this work for what I'm doing, incorporate what I've already created, but also hit on a few points that people are missing. And I'm going to share those three points with you right now. Okay. <laughs> so so get out your people to it. For, um, not you, but for the people watching, right? Um, and that is number one, understanding that you are a storyteller right? And everyone has their own story. And that makes you completely different from anyone else. Even if you were traveling in the same car to the same destination, you next to your passenger have a completely different experience. You might have shared, you know, the same radio tunes while you were there, but you were looking out the passenger window while the driver was looking at the road, right? So there's two different perspectives on every, every different mm -hmm. um, experience. And so your experience and how you tell that as a storyteller is completely different. And you need to hone in on that and really use that as a point of uniqueness. Now, once you've got your storyteller position and you've really understood like who you are, what you do, what you want in life and how you're going to, you know, disseminate that, right? And, and get it out there to the world. It really then comes down to, do people want what you have? <laughs> because if you're giving them something, you could be like so gung-ho and like, oh, I've got this great story to tell and I'm, I'm giving it to you. And people are like, 
No, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is really about the delivery of your brand, right? And that means that the messaging has to be copywritten. It has to be um, integrated into some sort of marketing campaign with a strategy behind it. Mm -hmm. It has to be um, really representative of who you are, because if you put on a suit and tie and then you try to tell your like super down home story, people aren't going to buy it. Yeah. You know, so you can't dress up something that shouldn't be dressed up. So mm -hmm. it really comes down to a lot of visualization of what that branding should look like and how that messaging should come across. So you've got your stories that you're going to tell. Yeah. You've got your messaging and how it should look. And then at the end of the day, you must absolutely come back to where your originating point is and understand that the messaging alone, your story alone is not the end of your business. And that is how you scale is you can't just say, okay, well, I, I grew up in Iowa. I moved to the Bay area when I was three, I started dancing and that's it. Right? Ooh. No, you have to continually evolve because like I said with Oprah, she had her, her weight battle. She had, you know, issues that she was going through, whether it was with men or, you know, childhood issues, or she was continually stretching herself. She was continually inviting people in to know more about her. And that's where the story has to continue because people don't want to just take one thing and go, okay, I know her. No, mm -hmm. that's absolutely not where the story ends because you constantly evolve mm -hmm. from wherever you began. And that's the story people really want to hear. They want to see your evolution. They want to know, oh, wow, you know, I started out and she was, you know, talking about entertainment, but now she's talking about course creation. And now she's talking about college of style. I need to go to college of style, like whatever it is that, that makes your story unique and evolve. It's that arc. It's like a movie, right? You want to see the hero win at the end, but then you're like, is there a sequel, right? You want that like next thing because you really enjoy it. You think it's great. You want to buy more, whatever it is. Um, and so I think those three things are really important for any course creator to be like, that's not the end of my story because I'm still writing my story. Yeah. Does that make sense? And that's yeah. my story. <laughs> So that sounds really, I mean, you've got a whole lot of story of um, to share with all that background and everything, which some people might be looking at that and think, well, you've got an exciting story to tell. <laughs> My story isn't necessarily as exciting. So what would you suggest for somebody who feels like their story is rather boring? They, you know, why would anyone want to know their story? The reason anyone wants to know your story is because there's a million people out there exactly like you. Trust me. It is a big world and you might say, okay, well, I'm the only Sandra in this, you know, that's exact, you know, but trust me, there are people who will identify, even if you think you have the most mundane, you know, run of the mill, everybody has been there and done that kind of a story. Well, yeah, well, there's a million people who've been there and done that just like you who are like, oh, I get her, she gets me. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You could be the person, right? for that million people. And it, does, it doesn't take a million people to have a successful business, no. obviously. No. <laughs> <laughs> but there are that many people and customers out there for you to then continually scale your business to find additional customers to, you know, um, to sell to or to work with or, or collaborate with or all of those things. So even if you think that your story is not unique, it really is. And it does come down to sometimes like you work with people about how to work with video and how to tell your story on video. Like that is important because even if you think your, your story is not unique, the way you visualize your story, the way you share your story, whether it's through video or audio or both at the same time or on social media, that is definitely a uniqueness that you will have to your storytelling ability, whether it's cutting away to a behind the scenes and then coming back, or if it's just you straight onto the camera eating your cereal, like that will be unique to you. And that is something that, you know, you can't buy, you know, you can't buy the, the individual attributes that each person has, even if we're talking about artificial intelligence and how all the technology can, you know, scan your face and then they know who you are. Like it can do so much because it is programmed by humans. 
right? And we all have our limitations. And so it will be as good as the person programming it, right? right. So I just think that it, even if you think it, don't doubt yourself until you try because you will fail if you don't try, but you might succeed if you do. Right, exactly. And you know, you're guaranteed to not, uh, not succeed if you don't actually try it. <laughs> Whereas if you try it, yeah, you might fail, but you're more likely to, you're going to succeed more, um, you're more likely to succeed if you actually try it than if you don't. Exactly. And you will learn so much from your failure. Like if you try it and fail, you will learn from yeah. that, yeah. that defeat. And it is in those failures, in those moments where you're like, oh, you know, I should have done this. I should, I could have said this. I would have been, you know, I was in the elevator. I was in the room with, you know, whatever. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people miss. They're like, they're afraid of that failure mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, I can't do it. I can't go to that job interview. I can't do whatever it is. Um, I don't want to put my course out because it's not ready. That one I've heard a lot, right? right. Um, or I don't want to um, have them seeing me not um, in a hundred percent. And mm -hmm. people are like, you know what? I get it. I'm not a hundred percent every single day either, right? So it's it's really about the constant pushing yourself to get stuff out, even if it's not done, mm -hmm. even if you know you want to tweak it again. And I think that that's kind of the the gift and curse of authors as well. You know, as a course creator, you are, you're the script writer, you're the video editor, you're, you know, you're, you're the social media manager, you're, you're kind of doing all of those things. Um, and you, you want to do them all at hundred percent. And you probably could, if you had a team, <laughs> you know, um, or if you scheduled it really far in advance and mm -hmm. had that, you know, notice. Um, but I think that a lot of really great and talented people we don't even know because they haven't put their stuff out yet. And you could be watching this and you could be one of them saying, not pointing you like that's me, right? That's exactly where I think we need to go and say, you need to put it out, put it out no matter what. Don't, don't fear the failure because it might not be there. That failure might not come. Success might be on the other side of that window, you know? And, and the other thing is, and this is something I found that I put my first course out there and it failed. Like no one bought it, but <laughs> I learned through that. And I if I had, like, <laughs> right, I did it. <laughs> so I put it out there, but um, I learned through that experience how to improve what I wanted to do. But if I hadn't taken that first step and taken the action and actually moved forward on that, then I would have still been stuck in my head thinking about the perfect course. And I wouldn't have been moving forward and actually making a course that would actually benefit people because I'd still be stuck in my head without actually trying it out. So I think even when failure is a possibility and throughout the entire process as a business builder, you're going to have the ups and downs. Things aren't going to work. You're going to try something and then be like, okay, that didn't work. But then you're going to be a step closer to finding what does work. That one mm -hmm. didn't, but then there's all these other options to still try. And then you go ahead and try one of those. And one of those is going to be the key to, you know, you being able to move forward. And unless you actually take action and move forward, like you were saying, then you're not going to find that one. You're going to be still stuck right back here trying to get it perfect. So exactly. And yeah. a lot of other people will have had your idea by then. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> It will be in the marketplace. And that one great idea is like already been there, done that. You know, I, I feel like there's so many people that wait and sit on that great idea. And it's like, no, yeah. don't like you're like in this, that slow-mo, like don't do it. Right. In that yeah. moment where you're just like, no, just do it. Like, even if yep. you have to take the Nike freeze, just do it. That's right. I agree. And uh, as you do it, you will learn and you'll grow and you'll, you're already putting your content out there. People are getting to know you. And the other right. people that are still waiting or haven't even thought about it yet, they're going to be joining later in the game. So you want to get in right away. Um, what's the phrase? It's the best um, time to plant a tree was a thousand years ago. The next best time is right now. Right now. <laughs> so uh, right. take action right now and uh, start moving forward. Great. Right. And right. also another thing you said I thought was very good as well was about the um, the story aspect is actually people do resonate more with ordinary people that are just like them and can identify with them. And sometimes actually the exciting stories, I mean, I, I haven't got a clue what it's like to be on stage with people and on TV and doing those kind of things. So I can't resonate with you in that respect. I think it's a really interesting and entertaining story, but 
it can't connect to me in the same way because that's not my experience. Now, there'll right. be other people that do have that more of that connection. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who are watching this or listening and thinking, I don't have a story to tell, <laughs> you know, we do connect with those who are very much like us and we want to attract our tribe. We want to attract people that we want to work with. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there. So, you know, there's a lot of courses on your topic um, that other people are serving but they're not necessarily the audience that you want to attract. You want to attract the person that is right for you. And by being authentic, developing your story, as you said, mm -hmm. is going to attract that person who is the ideal client. And those are the people that you want to work with. Exactly. Exactly. You said it best. I'm not even going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I th well, I will say this one thing. I think that when you sit back after putting your course out there, you will look at some of the things, and I've done this too, where some of the things that I said or, or you know, um, a mannerism that I did, and I'd be like, that was good. That was good, you know, because you don't know in the moment mm -hmm. how you are coming across because you're, you know, you're videoing or you're, you know, you've got a lot going on. And then you look at it and you run it back and there might be some hiccups every once in a while, but you look at it back and you will have a moment of brilliance. It will happen to almost everyone. You'll And what they call that in LA, in LA or Hollywood, they call those happy accidents. Oh, yeah. You will have one of those moments where you're just like, oh, oh, that's something I need to trademark, or that was a phrase that should be like a hashtag, or you know what I mean? You will have those moments that are not scripted, that you feel like, whoa, looking back, like it might be a mess. It might be a complete hot mess, but there will be those shining moments, those nuggets of nowness that I really feel like are like, blowing it out of the water and those will be your saving grace. And that's what you, you build on from there forward. That's really interesting. I hadn't even thought about some of those ideas. Um, so what would you say would be the a practical step that people can take based on what you've been sharing or um, even what's in your content that you would like to recommend that people start with? I think that um, one of the biggest things that I feel is a misstep for a lot of people is um, they're not productive uh, because they have too many notifications going on, whether it's on their computer with their internet, um, like email notifications or their phone, push notifications from all the different apps that they're using. I think one thing that will help people is to streamline productivity by eliminating notifications. At least, you know, maybe putting, something just happened outside. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, whether it is, um, putting your phone in a drawer or actually turning them off, um, whatever it is that you need to do to streamline all of that noise, I think will be beneficial to actually get a course done or get whatever the project is done and out of the way and off your plate. The other thing that I have seen is that a lot of people um, worry about what people are saying online. And that, that like attacks them in this weird, like I have, a lot of experience being online because I was on a reality show way back in the day. I was on the first um, season of So You Think You Can Dance. And I was the first girl from the top eight girls to be kicked off. And so I have a very unique perspective because I'm technically a, re a, a trivia question who was the first kicked off of those, uh, So You Think You Can Dance. Um, but I also feel like the negativity that you see on social media, because there is a lot of it, can impact your decision making. Um, it also can impact somebody who's pivoting from like a nine to five job to being self-employed or, or a solopreneur. Um, and that is how much you say online and how authentic you can be. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people censor their own, their own, you know, um, content online because they want to attract a certain audience. But the more you censor who you really are, and I'm not talking about like cuss words, I'm talking about like your real opinions and your real truth, um, that is not going to attract your ideal customer. If yeah. you put out like, hey, I'm a super fan of friends, or I am the like nerdiest girl and I love tech, like put it out there because you're going to attract the right people. And so one, notifications, silence, and two, 
don't worry about the noise out there and being able to really put yourself out there on social media because the more that you are honest and forward and giving people more of you, the more people will give back of them. Because if you're guarded in that weird, like glossy, like, oh, I put my shiny red lipstick on and I'm just, you know, I'm here. They're not going to be here for that, right? They're going to be here for the un, you know, on makeup, you know, slightly tousled hair that they're like, girl, you, mm -mm." and I'm just like that, you know, whatever it is. They will identify more if you take off that, like that, that shield that a lot of people do on social media and not worry about the noise that comes with that. Because the more engagement you have, the more you're converting clients also. Um, And I feel like those are two of the things that I've seen a lot of people worry about. Um, And I'm not talking about like death threats because that's serious, but I'm talking about like people just like being annoying and being like, uh, you know, being meh on, on social media when it's like, you know, just keep moving, keep mm-hmm. it moving. And if you keep moving, obviously you will grow as far as um, how you think about yourself and how you're able to communicate that with your audience. Mm-hmm. I think as well, um, one of the things that I, um, I have a confidence on camera challenge. And one of the things I share in that is that we like I said before, we want to attract the ideal person that we want to work with. So if we are putting ourselves out there, it doesn't have to be every detail. So there are going to be things we don't want to share necessarily, but you do want to share, you know, some of your hobbies, the things that you enjoy, and uh, maybe some things which other people can resonate with that you want to attract into your world. By putting that out there, yes, you're going to be putting off some people, but then they're not your people. So don't worry about them. And, you know, just let them go, go find somebody else who can serve them and then attract the people that are right for you. And you're going to enjoy working with those people because they have, you know, basically found something in you that they connect with. Mm -hmm. And you're going to enjoy what you're doing so much more because you're working with people that you enjoy. Yeah, definitely. And that really ends up being a little more, um, you know, how people say give more than you than you take. But a lot of times when you get you know, the ideal client and you get that kind of, you know, back and forth exchange engagement on social media, you're getting a lot more than you give sometimes. And that can be really, um, uh, inspiring for you as a creator, um, to then build out whatever else that you had planned, you know, because you want to serve your community more. So I think sometimes the more that you're, you think you're putting yourself out there, you might get 300% back that goes, huh, maybe that, maybe, you know, so-and-so said they needed this. Well, I'm going to make it for them because Mm -hmm. that inspired me to do this. You know, so I feel like there's that like give and take, but sometimes it's really a a take, take on one side because they're really giving you so much of them. And it is, um, you know, it's, it's, you take it to heart because a lot of it is very personal because you're working with people who want to better themselves and they want to, um, have their dream and you can get them to their goal. And that is really like, it's scary. And in one aspect, like, oh yeah. gosh, I can't mess this up. Right. But at the same time, it is really like, oh my gosh, you know, the stories that you will have coming back into you, yeah. you know, of testimonials of people who have done amazing things, or you said that one thing, Sandra, or you, you know what I mean? That, that really flipped my, my switch. And that's the thing, like I've heard a lot of times, I, I listen to my mom a lot, you know, my mom says a lot of the stuff and I'm like, ah, thanks mom. But you know what? When I heard one person say that same thing, my mom was saying like 20 times when I was young, but I never listened, but I found my person, right? It makes sense. Your light goes off. You are the person for so many people that you may not even know you're the person for yet. Mm-hmm. No, that's a really great point. And, uh, I think there's a lot of value here. And obviously I would say then the main thing to take away at this point is, as you say, turn off notifications because you're going to be so much more productive. And I totally agree with that. (laughs) When I'm working on um, scripts or course creation or anything like that, everything goes off so as I can, I can focus. And the next thing that you were saying was, I think you almost have to kind of take a step back and really think about what is it about you that makes you unique? That's your story. And then 
even start writing stories from your background so that you can use those stories in your email and your content and that kind of thing to start drawing those people to you. And so maybe starting a story collection of yeah. things that you I mean, can people start can start writing. a blog or, you yeah. know, or even in your notes section on your phone. I mean, there's so many ways to just really um, make it a bullet point, even if it has to be really short. If you remember the story from your childhood, for me, what I have been doing, and this is really uh, I, I used this hashtag the other day, building a brand in broad daylight. I was using that as like my little moment of like epiphany for yesterday. Um, and that was because every single um, episode of my podcast, um, it's called Sweet Bites with Sandra. And every single episode, I tell a story about my days in entertainment. And I, I have done that on purpose because eventually I'm going to take those stories and put them all together and literally it will all be done for me. I'm just going to take the transcript and make it into a book and it will be like, as you're doing things, you can literally be doing four different things, but just adding them into what you're doing. And then, I don't know, a year later, you might have like a hundred stories and that could be another project that you, all you have to do is just gather the information instead yeah. of going, Oh, now I have to write a book. Like you could literally just go, I already did it. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I and think then. a lot of, I've seen a lot of people do that with, um, with like short courses, you yeah. know, they've, they've created maybe a mini course. that's just one or two or three modules. And then they've made it into a much larger course that, that, you know, maybe they pitch to a corporation and do like a two week training with, you know, different people. So that's something that I feel like, even if you don't think that you're doing a whole lot by making a mini course, you could literally make many, many, many in the same vein, same topic, same theme, and yeah. have those become something much larger. Um, and I think that that's something that's missed by a lot of people. Actually, that's something I'm actually doing right now. So my Teach With Video course <laughs> yeah. is currently one package. But I find that a lot of people, they just want to know the editing or they just want the production or yeah. whatever aspect it is that they want. And so I'm actually cutting it up <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm putting them into mini courses, which you can buy as a bundle so you can get the entire package as one. So if you want the entire thing, you got that. Uh, but you can also just get the individual uh, um courses basically if you just want the one thing that you want to to hone your skills on but uh, that's exactly it I think sometimes we think we've got to create this great big course this signature course and we've got to you know sell it a high ticket because everybody's saying high ticket is the, the way to go but sometimes actually creating that mini course is a step in the right direction you start getting your testimonials or stories you get your experience and then you've got that to use either as a course in its own right, or you can use it as a lead magnet later on as you create your courses, or you know, it's as an introductory offer before you offer your bigger courses. And all of these things are not wasted. They are, they can be part of your longer term plan. So thank you all for all of this because this has been super helpful. Is there somewhere where you would recommend people can connect with you further to learn more? So I would always direct people to my website, sandracoltamedici.com. And I invite you guys to join me on my podcast, Sweet Bites with Sandra. Great. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk soon. So what did you think of that interview? I think for me, I, I thought it was a really good point how your audience wants to see your journey and not just your past, but also your current journey right now. I think the temptation sometimes can be that people aren't going to be that interested in what you're doing right now. Or maybe you actually feel like people won't take you seriously if you share your journey of working things out. But if you're familiar at all with Russell Brunson, he did and he actually does exactly this by sharing what he's learning on his podcast. So I guess the thing is for me and for you is not to wait to tell your story. Share your story as it unfolds and maybe that will be part of what brings about your breakthrough. Now, she shared a lot of different things here. So let us know in the comments what was your biggest takeaway and what you plan to implement this week as a result. Okay, so let's dive into today's tip, which is to think about what's in your background because you can actually utilize your background to back up your message of your content. So for example, I have camera related things in my background. I have cameras, lenses, flash, even a clapperboard, all of which backs up my content as a video course coach. However, it's also nice to include little elements that are important to you, such as maybe a picture of your family, um, a souvenir, uh, awards if you have any awards that are related, um, or even if they're not related, but it's something that's important to you, and um, maybe some important books or whatever gives your audience a little more insight into you as an individual, 
because these are good connection points for those who might have the same interests or values that you do. Another thing to keep in mind is to incorporate your brand in colors so that you have a cohesive brand across all platforms. So you might want to look for ornaments that are in your brand colors or maybe paint the wall behind you, which is what I did in my previous studio setup. Or you could use colored gels on lights if you want to as well. The important thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't distract your audience from the content that you're sharing. So it should enhance and back up your message and give you a cohesive look in your brand. What you don't want is a mess in the background or anything that's going to cause them to disconnect from what you're saying. Of course, you could just use a plain background as well. Uh, that's absolutely fine, in which case I would at least choose a background that matches your brand colors. But if you feel up to creating a bit more of a set to enhance your audience's experience, then just keep in mind those things that I just shared and you should be good to go. Now, as course creators, there's a lot that makes our business run effectively. So I do like to recommend some of my favorite things as a course creator business owner. Now, today's recommendation is .com secrets. So if you want to know how to set up your business for growth in the online world, then this book is for you. Those who are scaling their businesses to six, seven, and eight figures, they don't do that just by selling a course. They've got an entire system in place that takes the customer on a journey with them. And your audience needs to know, like, and trust you before they're gonna buy your big office from you. So by being strategic about your customer journey and the courses and services that you can provide, you can build out an entire system that will ultimately serve your clients better and enable you to make more impact in people's lives. So .com Secrets gives you that strategy and gives you the options to choose from that will work best for you and your business model. So I would recommend checking out the link below to get your free copy of this book. And I also want to remind you that if you want personalized help building your online course business to check out the Course Biz Intensive Program and the link for that will be below as well. So before I wrap this up, let's do a quick recap. First of all, you heard from Sandra Colton Medici, an entertainer turned brand expert on the topic of branding yourself to attract your ideal clients. Today's tip was to design a background that backs up your message and your brand. My recommended tool this week is .com Secrets to help you build out a scalable business. And to wrap all of this up, the action step I encourage you to take between now and the next show is to start sharing more of your journey with your audience. Now on the next show, I'll be interviewing Stu McLaren on the topic of recurring revenue through membership sites. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for tuning into the Recognized Expert Show. For access to any of the resources mentioned in this episode, be sure to check out the show notes on the YouTube version of this show, which can be found at youtube.com forward slash Demelza Marie. And if you found this show helpful, I would love for you to share it with others who may 